the most important thing is to try and inspire people so that they can be great in whatever they do that was a quote from kobe bryant the great basketball legend good morning afternoon evening people joining from across the world i am so delighted and happy and honored to have with me mark walton my mentor my guru he has helped me so many times and i'm so delighted to have you welcome mark in my instagram inspiration show episode number 9 I am surprised to say that or to hear you say that I am your mentor Heritage because I've got to tell you and I'll tell all your friends who are watching that I have considered you one of my mentors. Oh. I've learned <laughs> as much or more from you than I than I have from any of the toastmasters that I know and believe me I know a lot of toastmasters. So I'm really glad to have made your acquaintance and if I've made your life any better or any different that tickles me to death. Oh, thank you so much. You you are just so humble. I I can't beat you on that. <laughs> okay, uh so I'm uh, I'll tell a bit about the format. Uh so this is going to be a more about <laughs> longer table topics to say. Uh I'll be asking few questions to you and uh in in between if audience who is joining us online have any question they can put it on the comment section and we'll see if we get time we'll tackle a few questions towards the end uh so this is it i'm really looking forward to your nuggets <laughs> uh let me start by asking you to uh, summarize your life journey the major milestones of your life in few minutes summarizing my life very quickly I'll start off by saying I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Now, some people might think that's not much of a life summary, but it pretty much does mine. But if you don't know me, I'll fill you in on some of the biographical details. I'm 70 years old and will remain as 70 for three more days. Then I'll be 71. Wow. <laughs> I was born in the central part of the United States in a state called Ohio. Heritage you lived in Indiana. Ohio is very similar to Indiana. It's the Midwest. Yeah. I've been married for many years. I've got my wife perfected now and I don't intend to change her. She and I are uh, <laughs> a pair. We have two excellent sons. One is an attorney here in town and the other is a software engineer in Denver. I have four grandkids and my favorite of the four is the one that I have seen the most recently. Always. They're all excellent grandkids. That's my family. As far as employment goes, I spent several years working at different jobs at which I was not particularly successful and then I went into business for myself and in a small way I was fairly successful at that and when I retired I found an excellent hobby in toastmasters and that is what is filling my days these days that's what I would say about myself if if asked Okay thank you i i think yeah, you are cutting down so many parts but i think i'll forgive you for that <laughs> but uh, uh, jokes apart uh, so some of the things that we do in this uh, instagram inspiration is to uh, extract out some of the uh, failure some of the things that we have undergone through in life and and find out if there is something that you know, a lesson or something that we can pass on to the next generation uh, so would you like to talk about your failures and how did you overcome yeah that's actually a really good question i'm glad you've asked it and i'm so unfamiliar with instagram but i'm seeing that laura anderson asked what my business was yeah i'll i'll deal with these things sequentially but starting off with failures 
when I was young, I was, I guess, technically well-educated. I had a ma I have a master's degree. But I had no particular skill. It was a liberal arts degree. And if anybody would like a liberal arts degree, I've got a couple of them that are doing nothing right now. They've done me no good. They did not prepare me for employment very well. And to be honest, I did not apply myself the way I should have to my earlier positions. So I bounced from job to job. I probably had three jobs in 10 or 12 years. And I wasn't much good at any of them. Now that's looking back. I don't think I was successful, but I finally found a job that I liked and that was selling children's books. I had kids at the time. I liked books. I have always. I was very good at selling children's books to school librarians, basically. I knew the catalog backwards and forwards. I was comfortable with the literature, comfortable with the people. I liked them and they liked me. I did pretty well with that until the time that we had a massive budget cut in Indiana, in the state that I live now, in our educational system. And we have those periodically. And the schools fired all the librarians. <laughs> all of my contacts were gone. All the people who bought books from me were gone. The schools were not buying books. And I wasn't selling any books. <laughs> so I, I, I lost that job. And then I tried to pick up different lines of books, selling them as an independent as opposed to an employee. And I realized I was chasing the wrong car because there was nothing there. There was no money to chase. And at that point in time, I was pretty much a complete failure. I had a family. I had a miserably inadequate income, what I considered to be no job skills and an education which was not serving me very well. So what were my assets? I had one thing going for me that I hope everybody who's listening does not have. I hope you don't ever get it. You wouldn't want it, but if you need it, it's probably there. That asset was desperation. Mm. I have found in my life that when you absolutely, totally must do something, no matter what, sometimes you can do it. And what I had to do was find a living for my family because I had failed at the other things that I had tried. <laughs> what I did was silly in this day and age, but I actually bought newspapers every day and looked at the help wanted ads. I think that's a little old fashioned these days, but that's what I did. And finally, I found a little quarter inch tall help wanted ad that said, make big commissions buying books. And I thought to myself, well, that's silly. Mm -hmm. You make commissions selling books, not buying them. These people don't even know what they're talking about. Uh, but I answered the, answered the ad anyway, because it was books, and I like books, and found out that there was another business out there that was not too far from what I was doing. And not to bore you, but I bought old textbooks from schools Mm -hmm. in wholesale quantities, and then I actually wholesaled them. Later on, I got mm -hmm. into the retail of them, but that was my business. I bought old books from schools, and it was a very good business for us. But it started with desperation, and I hope that people listening would rely instead on education hard work and intelligence. Those are probably better assets to have in your quiver than 
desperation. How's that for an answer? Is that what you're looking for? Wow. Thank you so much. That is such an inspiring story. Uh, I won't say it's a story. It's, it's, uh, it's your life story. And, and I'm so thrilled to know this. Thank you so much for sharing this. Uh, I knew a part of it, but not the whole uh, portion. So thank you for, <laughs> for the whole audience. Uh, I do know that uh, you also had some uh, uh, heart disease and, and something to do with the fitness. Would you like to share things about that? Oh, yeah. I, 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 you'll be sorry that you asked this. I, I just better warn everybody. No, You're going to be really <laughs> sorry because I am evangelical about this and I like to talk about it. And I've found out that everybody loves talking about their own fitness journey and boy is it tedious listening to other people so i would advise everybody listening right now this would be a good time to turn the instagram off because i'm going to do boring <laughs> stuff <laughs> trust me so here goes get a pillow get ready i spent most of my life overweight pretty badly overweight. I was 50 pounds overweight 10 years ago. And it was all belly. And of course, I convinced myself I was not overweight. I just thought that was normal for me. But my belly was there. It was inescapable. And a little bit over 10 years ago, in fact, 10 years ago in December, I had open heart surgery because I had some blockages. And I was rather fortunate to have that surgery because otherwise I would not be here, of course. Mm -hmm. And after the surgery, I decided I would be more fit and eat better and not do such Oh, awful, have such awful diet habits as I'd had in the past, but I didn't know what to do. So for a couple of years, I just slowly gained my weight back. You lose weight when you have a big open, a big mm -hmm. surgery and open heart surgery is a big surgery. Right. The one thing I did rel religiously is I did cardiac rehab at a hospital facility. I enjoyed it because it was good structured exercise and there's a good society of us old conjurers who've had surgery there. As it happens, the fellow on the treadmill next to me, the retired physician, was going to a trainer, a physical trainer, and my older son, who lives here in Indianapolis, went to the same trainer. The fellow is really a charismatic trainer. He's, he's what you really want. But the two mm -hmm. of them, my son and my doctor friend, retired doctor friend, for Christmas bought me an introductory few sessions with the trainer. Okay. Went to see him and the trainer did exactly what I had hoped he would do and in a way that I would not have known to ask because mm -hmm. this fellow, his name is Joe Mobarecki, if any of you are here in Indianapolis, he knows everything about physical fitness from how to build muscles to the blood chemistry to how to pose in a one of those little tiny bikinis that the muscle builders wear. I do not, by the way, but he does. <laughs> he is an expert in information. He knows all that. But more important, right. he is charismatic. He tells you what to do and how to do it, and you want to do it for him. I did. Right. I lost my 50 pounds about eight years ago, and it's gone. I not a good place to show you my mighty muscles <laughs> but i am i am fairly lean now and fairly pretty good muscle tone my wife joined him too and she has done even better than i got my neighbor 
down the street and he has had a comparable experience. And I've got to tell you right now, I can pick up a 45 pound plate. Those of you who do weights know what a plate is. It's a big yep. weight and it's heavy. That's what I was carrying around with me all the time. And believe me, I am never, ever going back there again. I am going to stay away from that extra weight. I've done it for eight years. It's my lifestyle now. And I love every second of it. Because being fat is not as much fun as being fit. Wasn't that tedious? I thought so. No, I, I would say that that's so inspiring. I think I need to go back to gym. Once this corona is over, I'm going to hit back the gym here. I, I've got fat, a <laughs> lot of fat now. And I need to work on that. But yeah, I think this is an inspiring and uh, touching story. So thank you. Uh, how how did you uh, come to know about Toastmasters? Oh, well, that's a, to my mind, that's an interesting story. I mentioned to you, I did cardiac rehab at the hospital. The old guy on my right was my doctor friend. The old guy on my left is this World War II veteran, old soldier. Tremendous guy, easy to talk to, a lot of fun. Paratosh, you know him. I know Maybe him. some of the others do. It was a gentleman named Warren Sherman. Warren now, Sherman, yeah. I have a lot of historical figures that I like to read about, but I don't have many heroes. Warren Sherman is one of my heroes. He is to this day, 94 years old. I right. speak to him fairly frequently and he was a Toastmaster. So there we are on the treadmills, bouncing back <laughs> and forth. And he said he'd heard a speech last night about something that interested me. I forget what it was. Mm -hmm. I said, well, where did you happen to hear a speech? Why, he said, I heard it in Toastmasters. <laughs> you like Toastmasters, why don't you come see us? And I did for a couple of simple reasons. I like Warren, he's a delightful individual and everybody that knows him thinks the same thing. And I'm retired, what else have I got to do? <laughs> I went to the Toastmasters Club, and the first meeting at which I attended, I was asked to do an impromptu. And I, as anybody who knows me knows, I love to do impromptu, so I did. And then I was evaluated by a delightful Toastmaster who's not with our club anymore, Noreen Halligan, mm -hmm. very, very capable woman. And I realized, wow, I've got a lot to learn here. And this is really fun. I've been hooked. I've been a Toastmaster ever since. So that's how I got to Toastmasters. It was because of that treadmill <laughs> and because of my friend Warren Sherman. Wow, I, I know Warren Sherman, every time he used to come in Pioneer 17, he used to do any role, whether it's a uh, it's a speech, it's a Toastmaster, it's a, yeah, my favorite one when he used to bring the different poems and what a collection of poems he has. I'm, I'm impressed and he, he's such an icon and such a role model uh, for all of us. So. You know, his, his selection of poetry comes from a standard poetry textbook, which is exactly the same one that I used when I was in university. It's it's kind of fun. It's it's a good collection of poems. I bet it won't be same as me as mine <laughs> back in India. <laughs> All right. Uh, so now let's uh, move on to some more um, tips. Uh, so as part of this series, I asked my guests to give some for for young professionals going to start the career who are at the entry level that what are some of the two or three things they can do which can help in their career building which can help them in their life so what kind of tips you want to give to them 
Well, I would speak from the perspective of somebody who did not use his education well. I am well educated in useless information. I would suggest very simply pursue a professional degree that will give you employment. What we used to call almost jokingly, get a degree with a rice bowl attached to it. The idea that you eat out of a rice bowl. I do these days, by the way, I eat mostly rice. But <laughs> I studied history, which is utterly useless. And if I had that to do over again, I would not. So I hope the people who are listening are pursuing professional degrees. And if I had to name a few of the most obvious, I would say engineering, law, and medicine. Uh, those are those are the things that seem to be very gainful and very productive and very useful in the modern world. Not coincidentally, one of my sons is an attorney and one is a software engineer. I, <laughs> I have no history major in my family other than me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's very crisp and clear. And before I go on to my last question, audience, if you have any questions, please type in in the comment section. We had one question which I think Mark already answered about his business. Uh, so um, we all know the the cloud that we have right now, the COVID-19, Corona, the world epidemic. Uh, and I know different people are dealing with in different ways. So how are you dealing with the COVID-19? Well, I suppose the way most of us are, my wife and I are of an age that we are in the high risk category. We do not go right. out, period, except to the grocery store maybe once a week. That, and don't tell anybody, but we still go to see our trainer. We can do one-on-one -on -one sessions in the gym. We're the only two people in the gym when we go. The trainer, yeah, the trainer and me, or the trainer and my wife. So we've mm -hmm. done that. But the other thing that we do or I do, I do a lot of Toastmaster meetings right now, and I'm having a ball doing them. The nice thing is the online meetings let us escape from the geographical prisons in which we all have limitations. In other words, you're in England, you have friends in India. I've been with you and with some of your friends Right. Half a world away, I've been with other friends in China. We are getting in our club members who are in different states, several hundred. We have been broken and we can now have a lot more contacts than we had in the past. This to me has been a very positive aspect of the lockdown. And I got to tell you, I'm really enjoying that part. <laughs> yeah, I I think yeah, the same was true for me. Uh, I've been meeting so uh, so many people in Toastmasters around the world, places where I could have never imagined to go. And I think yeah, so in in a way that, that's a real positive with Corona. So yeah, I really so, thank you so much, Mark. This was such a delight to have you in the show. We are towards the end, and I. Do not see any more questions, so I'll I'll uh, conclude the session like I do every time. That no, let's all help each other in these uh, difficult times. And when I say help, it's not always about money. It's also about talking to someone for five minutes, feeding a pet, or doing something good for someone. It it has been an honor and ple ple pleasure to have you, uh, Mark. And you are my mentor, whether you accept or not. I've learned so much from you. I've, I have, uh, I've been so naughty, and you, you have helped me be straight. <laughs> so thank you so much. And uh, I'm gonna end the episode. Yes. Wait a second. You didn't give me a chance to tell tell everybody what I learned from you. Maybe maybe that'll be another time. But trust me, everybody who's listening. 
if you need a, somebody who will be a role model in your at least Toastmaster career, you're looking at him and it, it ain't me right now, folks. It's Heritage. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, so I'm going to end the episode by saying that, no, let's keep learning, keep growing, and keep going out of our comfort zone. This is Haritosh. Thank you so much for joining for episode nine, Instagram Inspiration with Mark Walton. I'll be back next week with another person who has inspired me in my life. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you, Heritage. Take care.